This video is going to introduce the style that can be added to a form. So I'm just going to show you the different selectors to actually capture the form elements so that you can style them. So notice that we have lots of different input elements. So we have input of type radio, type checkbox, type text, type file, lots of different ones. Here I have a form that has no style except the background, right? There's just a background color, but this is the style that you get with all of the form elements. This is what they look like and, and what size they are. So if you want to make changes to them, it's the input element, but we can capture each one individually by adding a type designation. So we can say type equals text. And that will, instead of picking up all the different input elements, that will just pick up the text one, the input that has type equals to text. Now I'm going to just use a background color that uh, allows you to really see it. So this is not something that you would use in development, right? But this is what you would use in testing to identify where the element is. And here you see that background color showing up on those text input elements. Also notice this makes it very clear, not as easy to see before, that there's actually a border around each of those. Now notice how this one did not get exposed and that's because its type is password. And so if I wanted that, then I would put a comma and do input and type equals password. And then I refresh that and you see that it happens there. But that's a different type of input. If I wanted it to relate to all the input elements, no matter what their type, I simply would say apply it to the input element. So let's see what we get there. And here we notice we get the text and the password and on the file types it shows up this no file chosen is where that coloring is going. All right, what about other things can we add? Other things that we can add are the height and width. So if I want to say how big the box is, I can say, ooh, height. I want it to be 24 pixels high. And I want it to be width. I want it to be 120 pixels wide. And I refresh. What does that change? So notice what parts are changed when I do that. So we got the height and the width, and no file chosen dropped here behind um, the actual button. And down here on the checkboxes and the radio buttons, they became much larger. So, and also notice that the buttons themselves got this height and width. Uh, notice the spacing here changed. So here we see reasons why we might want to do it different for each element. And uh, notice on these ones, since we've specified the width, that X, that labeling that comes automatically with it is not visible. So I could say, you know what, that's not exactly what I want. That's what I want for my type text. But for my input type file, I want something very different. I'm going to change the height on this one. I, I want it to be the same, so I'll do 25 pixels on that. But the width, I need it quite a bit wider, so it picks up that message. And there I get that, I get that distance. Now I can't see how big and wide it is because I've removed that background from it. So let me go ahead and, and just apply that testing background so I can see where the element actually is. And there I see that it spans that whole distance. And notice since I was very specific and I only added style to the text and the file input elements, the other ones don't have it. So we no longer have it on the, the buttons or uh, on the checkboxes. So there you get an idea of how to add style, how to use the selectors to access those input elements. Let me just quickly go over, notice we didn't make any changes to this drop down list or to the text area, neither even when we just did straight up input, because those are uh, in those are not input elements, right? So they don't get picked up, captured here when we use input. So the selector I need for text area is text area. The selector I need 
for drop down list is remember what that is? That was the select and the option. So let's see what happens when we do the select. It turns it red and in fact turns all of it red. If I change that to option, what do we get? It just shows up down here and not in the list up there. So those are the different selectors you can use to add details. Other style that I recommend using is uh, margin and padding, right? I've just used color here so you can identify how to select the element that you want to add height to. But let's go ahead and, and, and think about how what would that look like if I add padding. So if I want to add padding here to my options and I want to say I want to have eight pixels of padding, how does that affect them? Notice how there is no change in the padding on the options. So option elements are actually difficult to style and vary from browser to browser because each browser handles them differently. But if instead I do it on the select, then I can add padding to that select. And see, I get that padding top, bottom, right, and left. And not on the options, so they stay the same, but whatever is up here being displayed will show up in that. Also notice that text input can benefit by the padding. Because I put a height and width, there's some, there's some distance between the text there. But notice how the letters are right up against the edge. So I can go up here and I can say, you know what, I really want padding there. And in fact, I really let's go ahead and add the padding to all the input elements and see what we get. And say, I want padding. And let's go ahead and make it 10 pixels and see what shows up here. All right, so you see that padding showing up around the height and the width. And now when I type in here, uh, I, don't, I, I get some distance between those edges. So that padding shows up um, and gives, gives me that distance.